Magnum. Hi. <laughs> Say hi, Mag. Why that nub? Magnum. Good boy. Good boy. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good morning, everyone. It is time for coffee and questions. Magnum's excited, as you can see. Um, so I've got a couple really good questions here. Um, uh, actually, they're not necessarily questions. They're more informational for you guys, but we'll put them in the questions category. So the first one uh, is based on something that I had kind of talked about years ago really early on i think it's within the first three or four different videos that we did like 10 12 years ago i talked about using a, a big refrigerator as a drying cabinet well we've got um and then later on i talked about that maybe that same kind of um situation might work for drying boards out for people that have problems with moisture in their boards like making a little mini kiln basically so Jack Schaefer over in California uh, wrote me a letter and uh, I asked if I could use this and he said, yeah. So here's what he did. He said, this is his dryer experiment. I screwed some one by twos to the side. So he's used an old, free I got to start, back up. He used an old freezer. He gutted out an old freezer, stand, stand up freezer. Huh? Oh, he used an old uh, gutted out stand up freezer he applies some one by twos on the side to reinforce the shelves, and uh, he used his die grind grinder to cut a small hole in the in the bottom and in the top. Um, and then he bought a heater on Amazon, bought a little forty dollar heater that has a thermostat that has preset temperatures 65, 70, 75, 80, and 85. He says at first I put 85 and had the little heater right in front of the lower inlet hole. After a few hours, I realized that might not be the best placement. By drawing in the cool air directly into the heater, it was not even cycling at the 85 degree setting. Um, so I had, uh, he has a remote uh, oven, uh, oven thermometer in there, and um, so he can monitor the, the temperatures. Um, as shown, it went up to 127 degrees and climbing when he came back out. He wasn't comfortable with that, that so he moved the heater away from the hole. Uh, this stabilized the temperatures around 105 to 110, uh, which he was much more comfortable with. Um, so I'll show you the little uh, thermometer. This is the little oven thermometer, and that's where it shows it was like at 127 degrees or something like that. So, um, and this is what, Put the picture down. <laughs> okay, well, you had the no, camera I up. I lifted no, it. No, I'm just okay. saying. Put yep. the next one. Um, so here's a picture of the freezer or his mini kiln that he made out of an old freezer. So you see he attached some 2 by 2s or one by 2s there to hold those shelves. He did put weight on top of the wood, but it was after uh, he took this picture. These are just extra uh, one by 2s stickers that he's drawing down here in the bottom. Here's the heater that he moved away from the hole, and then he put a hole up here just as a, as an nice. exhaust. So um, it worked out really good. So I could go into some more things. He said um, a couple of notes. His shop is um, unheated, and he again, he lives in Northern California. He's got a metal building. So with cool nights and foggy and rainy weather, the metal ceiling and walls get pretty cold. When he came back the next morning to check on the wood, he found that his concrete floor was full of puddles of water. So what had happened is the warm air mixed and uh, caused condensation on the bottom side of his metal and uh, it, it dripped all over the floor. Fortunately, it didn't ruin anything. Anyway, so that's something to think about. Um, but bottom line is, uh, let's see, uh, that's about that. So bottom line, these boards that he put in here, when he put them in there, they were 25, between 25 and 38 percent moisture, which pretty much means they were soaked with water. Um, within three days, they registered at zero on his, uh, 
on his moisture meter. So it works. No doubt it works. I always had the theory that this would work, but now I know for sure. This guy tried it. Jack tried it. And I appreciate you letting me know, Jack, because I think, you know, you guys that live down in the south or you guys that, you know, have a big moisture problem, um, you, I think that if you wanted longer boards, you could probably set this on his back and use it as like a chest freezer and put your shelves in there however you wanted to. So if you wanted to, you probably could have longer boards in there. Or if you have a, an old chest freezer, but if you have an old refrigerator, um, I really think it's a, uh, it's a great way to go. You could build your own box, but man, using an old refrigerator or freezer, I think is a great way to go. And Jack just uh, proved it. So thank you so much, Jack, for letting me know that that worked. So I hope that's a help to you guys. All right. Okay, on to uh, information number two. Again, not really a question. This is uh, something that comes up uh, quite a bit and it seems to, lately it's coming up quite a bit. Uh, people that go and try the freezer paper transfer method. When we first started doing this freezer paper transfer, this is why you always wanna watch the latest videos. When we first started doing it, we didn't know any better and we were using the big rolls and cutting them into eight and a half by 11 sheets and they would curl and we've had people i've had a lot of people say that you know it was getting stuck in their printers and all that then we realized shortly after that that they they actually make a freezer paper in eight and a half by 11 sheets that's flat perfect for an inkjet printer this is uh, not a really good picture, but it's made by C. Jenkins Freezer Paper Sheets. This is actually just a, um, a screenshot off of a video that tip we did. Tip it back on the top. No, Oops. Not tip it up, I mean. Sorry, it's just glare on it. Oh. So it's, it, uh, it's in our Amazon store. It's C. Jenkins Freezer Paper Sheets. Eight and a half by 11 sheets. I've showed them many times, so many of you may already know about that. But but don't try, or I wouldn't suggest to try and do what we did at the very beginning before we realized that they actually made these. Uh, get these, or there is an alternative, and this is this is what brings me to this. So the freezer paper transfer uh, deal. Go watch LTS six thirty eighteen. 6 slash 30 slash 18 or video number uh, hashtag 403 and I'm sure there's more in the transfer playlist but anyway somebody was telling me that you can use label stock this is a basically trash this is a, a USPS label oh, I'm sorry if you set it down on the table maybe it will this is a USPS label that we you know create bunches of these every day uh, but if you just get a, um, a label stock paper and just peel off the labels, or if you keep them, if you use labels, if you keep them, then this works just like freezer paper. Um, so this has a shiny side and it has kind of a dull side. Freezer paper is the same way. So you can print right on this on the shiny side. Again, go back and watch those videos. And I use uh, silicone spray on here. And I've, I've already tried this. So if you put silicone spray on here and then print on the shiny side, it acts just like freezer paper. So, and it may be, you know, you might be able to, you know, we buy these labels boxes at a time because we use them. So um, it would probably be a lot cheaper for us not to even buy the freezer paper because this acts exactly the same. Anyway, so you can buy labels if you can get labels cheap enough and probably can cheaper than freezer paper sheets. Um, you can go that way and it works exactly the same. It's exactly the same kind of, uh, same kind of material, I guess. So, um, that is an informational thing for you, and every once in a while somebody will bring that up. And I know that, but I haven't talked about it too much on video. So that is our that's kind of short and sweet, guys. That's our two questions for today. So um, thanks so much for watching, and uh, I think you're seeing this on Monday. Wednesday we're going to have another big group of sign carvers of the day. 
or got to try and do that every couple weeks because the stack is growing. So uh, we'll have a big uh, group of sign carvers of the day in a couple days. And uh, that's it. If you haven't subscribed yet, we'd love for you to subscribe. And don't forget to click that little bell icon because we do four new videos every week. I'm on uh, Instagram every day, make a wood sign, most of the time every day. And um, I'm forgetting something. What am I forgetting? Oh, yeah, if you need supplies, there's the website and uh, there's the YouTube channel. Um, if you have any questions, that's what it is. If you have any questions, eric at makeawoodsign.com. I'm happy to help however I can. And uh, that's about it, guys. Hope you're having a, a great day and I hope you have a great week. And we'll see you on Wednesday. Bye-bye.